it's a bit you know kind of fearful doing comedy as is, but it's nice to go the extra mile and do a joke that if they get, they'll love, and if they don't, they'll hate you. Uh, I'm here tonight to do a stand-up comedy gig and try and entertain a room full of lightly drunk people. So I'll see if they can get some light entertainment out of my act. Just trying to chill out because I think if you're getting nervous and you're freaking out, it's just it's counterproductive because you're going to get up on stage and you're going to be all nervous and that adrenaline's already going to be gone because you're going to be freaking out in the back. So I think if you just get up on stage and just take your time. Once you've done a few gigs, you get used to that. I think at the start I used to be really nervous, like I could not take my mind off it because I'd just be worried what are they going to be like when I get out there, but uh, as time has gone on I think I've just learned it's better if you, if you, just, if you know your material, you can just put it out of your mind and then wait till your name is called. It's George Fox everybody, <laughs> A lot of my stuff has come from just real life. Because I'm kind of doing surreal comedy, you can kind of take real life events and stuff that's happened to you and you can kind of base surreal humour around it and it just, it's nice because it anchors it in reality. While if you're just coming up with something that's insane and mad, the audience can kind of drift away and just ignore it. But if you start off with something that really happened to you, I think on stage you look a lot more confident talking about it. Yeah, I worked at a music shop, which I really liked, and a lot of stuff I liked about it. By far my favourite thing was when Russian people would come in to buy stuff. Because for me, the accent's kind of cool and groovy. But, uh, and also on a more childish note, whenever I hear the Russian accent, a part of my brain goes, Oh, it's a spy! Because oh. they would come up, you know, and they would say things like, uh, Yes, uh, I have broken my friend's CD, but uh, if I am replacing with new one, never know he will. Yeah? <laughs> and I would never know whether that was just broken English or, you know, maybe a secret code. I'd often feel like replying there. Uh, uh, some guy came up and he was actually Russian and he said he really liked the joke, which uh, was just... It was weird for me, but it was nice for somebody to say that. But, uh, yeah, I want to talk tonight about um, the relationship between Ireland and England, because uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of history there, you know? In fact, 800 years. 800 years of, of rape, pillage, murder, slavery. An 800 year relationship, and yet on Valentine's Day, we don't even get a fucking card. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I think coming off stage, if you do a really, really good gig and you're really happy with it, it's the best feeling in the world. No drug or, or anything man made can, can come close to it. That's all for me, I've been George Fox. Good night. <laughs> I'm fairly set on going in this role and doing more gigs and more gigs. And doing comedy is just what I'm doing and what I love doing. <laughs>